I'm excited about the endless possibilities of 5G. Over time, we will see much faster network speeds and software coming together to form new experiences and services. 5G will touch almost every industry as the networks of today continuously become more complex. In many respects, 5G is a software game as the need for speed pushes the need for exposure and integration. How will operators properly monetize 5G and make the most of the consumer opportunity? It's my pleasure to discuss this topic and more with Mats Carlson, the head of Business Support Systems at Ericsson. Mats, it's lovely to see you again today. Hi, thank you. I'd like to start by asking you, what does 5G monetization look like? What will consumers be buying and how? Uh, obviously, 5G starts with uh, the characteristics of increased speed and, and low latency as, as the, the kind of main factors what 5G brings. But obviously, that means for you as a consumer that you will have the, the experience of a fiber wherever you are. Um, and, and for that means that all the applications that more or less you have been forced to sitting home at your 5 you can more or less uh, have completely mobile. And that means like uh, that you can do... Um, real-time gaming or cloud gaming, that you can have a lot of new applications uh, using augmented reality, uh, using your camera, uh, filming, uh, having a very low latency back to the network that you can have a really good experience with augmented reality on, on your mobile phone, wherever you are. So I think you will see a lot of innovations happening with new applications that really can benefit from uh, high speed and, and low latency. So people will pay for an augmented reality experience as opposed to an actual item? I, I think so. I mean, uh, my view is that, I mean, if the services really requires these characteristics to, to have a good user experience, I think people are, are willing to, to pay for the service. I mean, sometimes even today, you would see that, that people are paying for the service and, and the connectivity is, is kind of behind. I mean, uh, simple could be a Spotify where you're kind of zero rating your data uh, because you are, you're listening to the music, but you're not paying for, for the actual connectivity that is paid by someone else. So. Will we see the consumer take stage in the creation of offers and bundles? Uh, absolutely. And, and uh, as you know, I mean, sometimes people forget that 4G was uh, really about uh, innovating around uh, mobile internet and, uh, and I think you will probably see the same thing happening today a lot of clever people will, will create applications that are um, using the characteristics of, of a 5G connection So how do we manage this explosion of services? What will it look like? Now we talk about 5G being uh, the platform of innovation and, and I think uh, that put a lot of requirements as well on, on the service providers and the networks that uh, that it can't take like month to develop or and launch a new service within a network. I think uh, people would expect uh, that you actually have a one click, click more or less to, to buy a new service, uh, whether it's bundled with a, a gaming or whether it's a, a standalone service from the network. So I think this innovation needs also to be actually reflected in, in, in the capability of, of the network. So say in terms of, of uh, uh, asking for new services, uh, having them deployed and fully provisioned to yourself, I think will be key. And that needs to be done, in, as I said, very close to one click uh, as for you as a consumer, but it also needs to be done very quickly for the enterprises that, for instance, want to cooperate with, with the, the operator for a new service. What are you seeing this year as the pandemic changes the way we work and how we spend our leisure time? I think it's, um, I mean, someone told me that uh, this is accelerating digitalization with around like uh, five years approximately. Uh, and that means that this will in some way not be uh, that we will go back to, to a, new, a new or the old way. It, it will become partly the new normal. Uh, and and uh, that means that I think a lot of our work from home, a lot of our entertainment, etc., will move to your home, and of course also to move to your consumer devices. So, so for me, I think this is just uh, it has just accelerated what would have happened anyway. 
Mats, I've heard you talk before about the importance of the ecosystem and everyone working together. What is Ericsson doing to help the, the ecosystem evolve and work properly? I mean, obviously, one thing is, as I said, that it needs to be very easy. For instance, if you are an enterprise, a gaming company, how do I onboard uh, my game uh, that it can use the capability of the networks? How do I make it easy for the end consumer to buy the network and the gaming combined? I think here there is still a lot of work to be done, so say, to simplify the experience of, of onboarding partners to uh, to the solutions, to onboarding, to create ecosystem around it. And obviously that is depending on that, that you need to have open APIs. You need to have very simple ways of using the exposable assets that's coming out from the network, whether that is latency, whether that is security, whether that is bandwidth or whatever, so to say. So it needs to be also very easy to consume and order these type of services for a so consumer and for an enterprise. Yeah. Is there pressure on the entire industry? Absolutely. And I think there is a lot of uh, standardization work ongoing in, in different fora. Uh, there is like the telecom management fora trying to, to standardize the kind of ordering of services, the provision of services, uh, the monetization of services. But you will also see kind of a lot of vertical standardizations, for instance, about connected cars, that uh, that how can you get like an ecosystem around uh, connected cars, for instance. So you will see a lot of standardization. And, and obviously here, I think this is, uh, I mean, I think the good thing is there is a lot of work ongoing. I think uh, maybe the bad thing that there is still a lot of different for us trying to do this. And obviously here, I think it's a big task for, for Ericsson to help it out, to make the industry work together. Mats, thank you for sharing your insight today. You've helped me realize the renewed emphasis on digitalization and transformation. And thanks, Dan, for being invited and uh, having this talk with you. And thank you all for watching.